Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over the rain event which is going to be moving from the southern plains and the central plains as well into the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, and then eventually into the northeast uh, over the next week or so. The highest amounts of rainfall should be in the southern plains uh, and then eventually uh, we'll maybe get a couple inches into areas like Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, as well as for some parts of the Northeast. Uh, the rest of the eastern United States might get a little bit of rainfall, probably less than an inch, uh, but it still will be some amount of rain. So this is going to be a fairly widespread event. Uh, it's going to be taking place over the next couple uh, and maybe even a few days. So we'll be covering that. We'll be talking about when this will be moving into your area and timing this entire system out for you guys. So make sure you are staying tuned all the way until the end so you don't miss a single thing in today's video here's a look at the current national weather service page as you can see we have some red flag warnings in effect for a little bit of uh, north dakota south dakota wyoming and uh, montana as well as uh, in parts of northern california we have a few flood watches in colorado and then we have some air quality alerts for western wyoming we have some uh, wind advisories in and just kind of scattered throughout the northwest and then we have some freeze warnings uh, for a little bit of southern Idaho southern Oregon and northernmost California with a couple of frost advisories in southwestern Oregon and north central California as well Yesterday, we had a high temperature of 101 degrees in Death Valley, California, with a low temperature of 18 degrees Fahrenheit in Peter Sinks, Utah. The highest rainfall report was in Taylor, Arizona, where they got 2.88 inches of rain, and there were no snowfall reports yesterday. So, here's a look at the expected uh, of future cast radar from the European model. Now, this is, again, only one model, but in this type of scenario, uh, it's not anything that needs to be hyper-localized. Uh, this is not a winter storm, so we don't need to know exactly, uh, uh, right to the dot, exactly where that rain-snow line is going to be or anything like that. It's just going to be a simple uh, rain and precipitation event. It might drop a couple inches in a few areas, but it won't be uh, anything too uh, devastating or too crazy. So, it's going to start off mainly Wednesday night. So we're starting off on Wednesday morning and you can see we have a little bit uh, popping up but uh, it's by Wednesday night when it really starts to fill in for parts of the southern and central plains. Uh, it will be on and off showers in areas like Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, uh, and then you get into areas further south into parts of Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi. It'll be a little bit more of a steady uh, rainfall, even with a few thunderstorms uh, mixed in there as well. This would be by Thursday morning, and you can see that we have a little bit of a two-part system. We have one little uh, band up to the north into the Dakotas, Nebraska, Kansas, and then we have another little plume into Texas, uh, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Uh, and again, I, I would say most of these uh, most of these little bands of rain are not going to be too significant. They will bring some uh, moderate rainfall at times, but uh, we're not expecting anything that crazy out of this event. If we take a look at what Friday uh, morning and Thursday night will bring of this week, you can see that we're bringing uh, or we're expecting uh, some decent rainfall to be pretty much from the southern border all, all the way up to the northern border with Canada, uh, where we have some light or even moderate rainfall for those spots. So it's a, a very elongated area that actually goes all the way down into southern Mexico and extends all the way to central Canada. So that's a huge area of uh, contiguous rainfall all at once. And if you actually looked at yesterday's video, uh, we were talking about mainly the temperature pattern. We had uh, the trough uh, in the west and then we had the trough in the east and then we had that big surge of warmer temperatures into the central United States and this is why we have that system bringing uh, that system further to the north bringing in uh, warmer temperatures so as this area of storminess pulls away to the north uh, it will bring with it those those warmer temperatures to the south of there so uh, that's why we have those slightly warmer and milder temperatures for the central United States uh, for this week this would be by Friday uh, morning 
you can see we're still dealing with some scattered rain into Texas, uh, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, maybe even extending all the way as far north as Minnesota, as well as parts of South Central Canada. Uh, if we move this on to Friday evening, uh, you can see that we still have some rain uh, into the central United States, but this is when it does start to head a little bit further uh, to the east. So we will start to see a little bit more uh, in the way of rain in the eastern half of the country or the eastern third of the United States uh, as we get uh, into Sunday especially. So here to be by Saturday morning, you can see that that rainfall is still continuing, but it is pushing away to the northeast. So uh, it is starting to extend itself further to the north. We still have that rain uh, into areas of the central plains uh, it does again continue to steadily make its way further to the east but notice that it's now Saturday evening and we're still dealing with rain in eastern Texas which was dealing with rain on uh, Thursday uh, and Wednesday so Wednesday and Thursday still raining in those areas and by Saturday and Sunday, the rain has still not stopped uh, up into those spots of southern and eastern Texas. So uh, you will be able to accumulate quite a bit of rain. We're thinking around two to four inches for that spot and for that region. Uh, and that's just mainly because we're not expecting anything to be uh, too steady. We're not expecting anything to be too heavy at once. Uh, but we think that probably uh, the accumulation of that, the amount of time that you're going to be spent under the the, the guys of that low pressure system uh, will allow some of that rainfall to really add up. So even if you're just getting maybe a tenth of an inch per hour, but you're raining for three days, well, uh, now you're dealing with uh, quite a bit of rain. You're dealing with somewhere closer to five, six, or even seven inches. We're not looking at that. We're not looking at the rainfall rates even being that high. Uh, but even if you're dealing with maybe just half an inch of rain per day, if you're raining for three or four days, that's going to add up to an inch and a half or two inches. So it'll make the ground a little bit soggy, but we're not expecting, again, too much major flooding uh, into these areas, mainly because uh, it's only going to be a few inches spread over a couple of days. Here would be by Sunday morning, and you can see that we're dealing with that band of rain extending further to the northeast. So now uh, uh, parts of New England starting to get in on some of the rain, and that extends all the way as far south as uh, Arkansas and and Texas. Now let's move this on to Monday. Uh, well, this will actually be Sunday night into Monday morning, and you can see that we have some of that rainfall still uh, for parts of the Northeast, the Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley. So it's kind of in an arc shape uh, over the eastern United States. If you live in the Southeast, you might get touched briefly by uh, this rainfall, but it will, for the most part, avoid you guys, so that's good news for you guys. We're not dealing with too much expected down there. Uh, we're ma mainly expecting maybe half an inch at most, but a lot of areas will actually be under a quarter of an inch of rain over the next 10 days. So uh, good news. It will be lovely weather for those spots, and we'll be dealing with temperatures that will uh, be into the 70s and the 80s, so nothing that's going to be up in the, into the 90s or the triple digits like we were dealing with in the summer. It's it's really going to be a very pleasant start uh, to October. So this will be uh, uh, for October 4th, which is uh, these, this upcoming Monday. Uh, and then here will be Monday morning. You can see that we still have that rain. Uh, kind of just chugging along further uh, to the east. Uh, again, it's not really going to touch the southeast all that much, especially if you live southeast of the Appalachians, uh, where th that mountain range will allow some of the rain to break up, uh, break apart before it heads into the coastal southeast. So uh, that area might avoid most of that rain. Uh, this would be by Tuesday or Monday night into Tuesday morning. You can see that we still have some moderate uh, rain into the northeast. So this would be for New England down through uh, the mid-Atlantic and all the way to the southern Appalachians where we do have some uh, lighter to moderate rain mixed in with some heavier batches, especially into the northeast. Here would be about Tuesday morning and you can see that has shifted over into New England for the most part. Uh, uh, by Tuesday evening it's into uh, still right along the east coast with most of that rain and then uh, by Wednesday morning we're dealing with some scattered showers into the northeast and the mid-Atlantic but we're not dealing with anything that's going to be as widespread as what we were dealing with when that back when that storm was back in the central United States. 
Here's a look at the total rainfall expected over uh, the next about seven to uh, eight days. This would be uh, the again the amount of total rainfall that we're expecting over that time frame uh, if you're in that uh, blue color that's about half an inch to an inch so that would be this color right here for example one to two inches in the yellow color uh, so that lightest yellow two to about five inches in the redder colors which you see for some parts of New England as well as down into uh, the southern plains uh, and then if you're actually in the greens or the gray colors that, that that's for the southeast mainly uh, that's where you're going to be under half an inch of total rainfall over this uh, eight or nine day uh, stretch so it's going to be fairly decent for those spots not dealing with a lot of rain but all that rain is going to be back into the plains so for uh, parts of Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Kansas, Oklahoma, we're dealing with uh, rainfall totals that will be uh, right around uh, 1 to 3 inches with localized 4 or 5 inch amounts. Uh, up into Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, uh, you're dealing with mostly right in and around 3 quarters of an inch to an inch of rain. Uh, the Tennessee Valley, probably a little bit lower. We're looking at uh, right around half an inch to 3 quarters of an inch. The upper Midwest and the Great Lakes, uh, it should be around a quarter of an inch to about an inch in some of those localized pockets. The northeast, we're dealing with more of a one to two inch band. And then in between there in the New England region and also for parts of upstate New York. Uh, and this band right here could shift to the north or to the south. So I would say generally, if you live within this area right here, watch out for the potential of localized three or four inch amounts with a, a general swath of two to three inches. Uh, and then again, for the southeast and the coastal mid-Atlantic, we're dealing with right around half an inch to uh, as little as a tenth of an inch or less of rainfall. So very, very pleasant weather. If you look at the precipitation outlook, it will be on the wetter side over the next six to ten days. So this is from the third through the seventh uh, for the southwest and also for the uh, area surrounding the Tennessee Valley uh, extending into the southeast. So those areas will be on the uptick in terms of rainfall. Uh, the northern plains and actually the northern United States in general dealing with expected less precipitation uh, than average, but uh, it looks like that's going to be mostly concentrated for the northwest. Now, here to be the drought monitor, and this is important because uh, we will be probably erasing some of that drought, uh, which we had in and very, uh, very minor drought, really nothing too substantial. But we do have some abnormally dry conditions, even uh, maybe stage one or stage two drought in some of these spots of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri. Uh, and that's all going to get cleaned up over the next couple of days. And I would expect that by the next issuance or probably not the next issuance, but I would would expect the one after that since the next one will be on Thursday uh, this upcoming Thursday so I would expect that the next Thursday when they put this out we would see most of this get cleaned up and it would probably be uh, all blank for those areas uh, it should help out the drought in the uh, uh, in the Great Lakes region the northern plains uh, the southwest also that'll greatly help in Arizona and New Mexico Colorado Utah as well getting in on some of that uh, rain and the northwest they're actually going to get their fair share of uh, snowfall and rainfall uh, for this week as well uh, next week won't be as rainy uh, we do also have some drought that we could clean up into the northern New England region although I don't think all of that is going to go away considering that we still have stage one and stage two drought uh, in those spots so I don't think all of that is going to go away but uh, you might actually get on the decent side of that and uh, it looks like we'll probably see some of that grass turn from kind of a yellow or brown color especially if it's a dead grass uh, some of that might uh, get a little bit of water and that should help to uh, make it a little bit greener so everything will kind of come to life again uh, in these spots that we're dealing with some of the drier conditions Here's a look at the upper air map and just kind of briefly talking about why this is happening. We have a low pressure cutting off from the rest of the jet stream and dipping down into the southern United States. Uh, and then if we just kind of follow through with that blue area in the southwest, that's your low pressure. And you can see it cuts off. Uh, so you have ridging in that orange color all above it. 
and it's just isolated right down there uh, and this is going to be that system bringing in the rainfall so this would be by Friday here would be by Sunday you can see it's uh, moving into Kansas Oklahoma Missouri uh, and then by Monday uh, it's a shortwave trough into uh, the Tennessee Valley and that will be eventually moving on into the Northeast so that is going to wrap it up for today's video if you have any questions uh, or you want a forecast for your area just leave a comment down below and I'll be responding within a couple of hours of you posting that if you want to send in any weather photos that you have send it to the email address in the bottom of the description uh, and then I'll probably add you guys on the video if you want that to be featured on the video uh, just let me know and you'll be the weather photo of the day so if you have anything especially during the winter time if you see uh, any snow if you get any snow if you're involved in any snowstorms or if you just see anything abnormal maybe some ice crystals send those over uh, and definitely they'll make the video and I'll put that in for the weather photo of the day it's always interesting to see uh what you guys send in with re regarding uh the weather photos so that is going to be uh something that especially towards the winter time i hope to have opened uh, up and hopefully more people are sending them in so uh again that is going to wrap it up for today's video and i'll see you guys tomorrow goodbye